Hey everyone, welcome back, welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant, in today's video we're going to talk about my new favourite Micro Four Thirds lens. Paired up with the Panasonic GX9, this is quickly becoming a super fun combo for everyday photography and hitting the streets. So let's roll that intro and let's get straight into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So yeah, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about a new lens I had on order. I was waiting for it to come in and it's finally arrived. Well, it actually arrived about a week ago and I'm only now getting around to making this particular video. The lens is the Panasonic Lumix 20mm f1.7 Prime Pancake Lens. Oh my Lord, what a fun, super awesome lens. So, you know, I've done a handful of shoots with it, only sort of personal work, maybe a couple of street photography sessions, general sort of everyday EDC photo walks and that sort of thing. And so far, it is absolutely brilliant. It's quickly becoming my favorite micro four thirds lens in the prime lens category. I love it. And I've got seven reasons why, so far, I think it ticks most of the boxes. So along with those seven reasons, there's also a couple of cons. So make sure you wait all the way to the end of the video and check those out too. It's nothing really drastic, it's pretty minor things. However, you know, no lens is absolutely perfect now, is it? Let's get into the seven reasons why I think this lens is fantastic. Okay, the first reason is price and value. This first reason really goes in hand in hand with the other you know, reasons why this lens is great. You know, price and value for what you get. You really can't beat it, right? So I got this lens secondhand. This is the Mark II version. Let me just take it off the camera. Okay, yeah, so this is the 20mm f1.7 Mark II. There's also the original uh, version of it as well. Uh, from my research, I don't think there's a lot of difference in the two. Uh, particular models. Let me know down in the comments below. Some people even say the Mark I version is sharper. But, you know, for me, this is the Mark II version. I got this for just over $300 secondhand um, on eBay here in Australia. But, you know, that's the usual going rate, okay? And for a fast little pancake prime, what a great deal. You're rarely spending over $400 for this particular lens, both the Mark I and the Mark II version. Um, in Australia, you know, I got mine, as I said, for about 320 They go up to about the $400 mark for like a real, real new copy. Uh, also, over in Japan, you know, there's a lot of camera companies in Japan that import over to Australia, and they're around that, you know, $300 to $400 mark too. So the price and value is one thing. It's also the availability of this particular lens. This lens is pretty easy to find, I must say. There's a whole stack of them here in Australia um, on eBay and, and uh, Facebook Marketplace. You know, they really are, you know, quite plentiful and easy to come across. So that's reason number one. Let's now get into reason number two. Okay, the second reason is size and weight. This thing here, even with the lens caps on, it doesn't even feel like anything, okay? It is light as a feather, you know, 
you can chuck this thing in your pocket and you don't even know you're carrying it around, okay? So, you know, size and weight just by itself is fantastic. Give me a moment. Okay, we mount it back on the GX9 and this is why I got this particular lens for this camera. I didn't really get it for any of my other Micro Four Thirds camera. I got it for the Panasonic GX9 as a real EDC street machine. And this lens mounted on this camera is super lightweight and super portable. You really, really just can't beat it. So that was reason number two. Let's get into the third reason. Okay, the third reason this lens is fantastic, in my opinion, is the overall build quality, okay? Um, it is built really, really to a real high standard. That's a lot of reels. Anyway, compared to my Panasonic uh, 25mm f1.7, this lens is fantastic. Um, you know, I use this lens a fair bit myself. This is the Nifty 50. However, it is very, very plasticky. Compared to the Panasonic 20mm f1.7, this lens is just built better, in my opinion. This one's got a real sort of plastic feel to it. This one feels, you know, you know, a lot better in the hand. Um, you know, it's a harder sort of plastic, if that's even a thing. You know, it's just a better built lens. I would definitely put it up there with my other Panasonic Lumix lenses like the 35mm 100. Uh, zoom lens this lens is built fantastically as well so you know they're much the sort of same when it comes to sort of build quality I think this lens is really really fantastic so that's reason number three let's get into the fourth reason okay the fourth reason this lens is fantastic is that fast f 1.7 aperture okay this lens is fantastic for blurring out backgrounds and subject separation um, you know, I haven't actually done a lot of that sort of stuff yet. I've only done a few sort of, you know, shots to really test out, you know, blurring out the backgrounds and uh, separating the subjects and, you know, all that sort of stuff. However, you know, that the f1.7 is brilliant for that, especially, you know, given the size of a prime lens, it's like a pancake on this particular camera, right? So the f1.7, fantastic, uh, fantastic for that sort of stuff. Also, slowing down your shutter speeds, low light conditions, it really can't be beat. And that 1.7 really makes it quite a versatile lens too, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that more later on. So that was number four. Let's now get into the fifth reason why this lens is fantastic. Okay, fifth reason, the focal length, okay? So 20 mil uh, micro four thirds or 40 mil in full frame land, not quite the nifty 50, 25 mil lens. However, 40 mil, it's a great sort of happy medium sort of focal length. And I'm starting to call it my documentary. lens is fantastic for sort of you know environmental portraits really telling the story that 20 mil or 40 mil you know uh, equivalent focal length you know it's that real good medium sort of distance it's not quite you know wide like a 12 mil or a 24 mil it's not 35 it's not that classic 35 it's also not 50 so it really sits nicely in the middle for a very very standard look in your images. And you know, it is quite versatile. The more you move your feet, you know, the more options you're gonna get with this particular lens. So I'm finding the 20 mil or 40 mil is a really, really handy, useful focal length, and I'm absolutely loving it. So that was reason number five. Let's now get into reason number six. Okay, the sixth reason this lens is fantastic is travel combo, okay? This lens here, as you can see, it paired up with the GX9 or any other Panasonic smaller camera. It's gonna be a great travel camera lens combo, okay? Fantastic. You take this lens and one versatile zoom lens, you really are set. So for me, I'm going up to North Queensland in a few weeks. 
Um, hopefully, that box hasn't been ticked yet. However, um, for me, this is gonna be my travel combo, okay? I'm gonna take the GX9, and I'm gonna take the 20mm f1.7 as my fast prime. And I'm, then I'm also gonna take my 35mm to 100 for some extra reach and some extra zoom. And this lens here is also fast too at f2.8, right? So, you know, I've got my wind end here at, uh, you know, 20 mil, and then I've got my sort of zoom covering my 35 mil to 100 mil here with this particular lens here. Okay, so that was reason number six. Let's now get into reason number seven. Okay, the seventh reason is the image quality. So the images that are coming out of this camera and this lens so far, I've been very, very impressed with, okay? The colors that this lens produces in both JPEGs and RAW has blown my mind. I have heard people say that this lens does give a bit of a film sort of look and feel to images. And I must say, I do agree with that. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the amount of glass that's in this particular lens crammed up in a small sort of area or anything like that, I don't know. But this lens paired up with this camera, the images are fantastic. Uh, the JPEGs out of camera are brilliant. But then, you know, you take the files into Lightroom and, oh man, you know, you've just got a great, great palette to work with. So I plan to make a few more sort of um, Panasonic Lumix JPEGs recipes, you know, for your Panasonic cameras. And, you know, this lens is really inspiring me to really come up with some cool ideas and combos. So if you're interested in stuff like that, uh, let me know down below and I'll sort of start to work on some more in-camera JPEG recipes. Because if Fuji can have them, why can't we? The image quality coming out of this camera and this lens has blown my mind, absolutely fantastic. Now, however, there are a couple of cons. So, you know, not all lenses are perfect. We all know that there is not that one perfect lens. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. And so far, the cons for me, you know, coming from 12 mil, 24 mil, you know, a wide sort of shooter, you know, it has taken me a little bit to get used to the 20 mil, particularly on the streets. If we have a look at this image here, uh, this is with 20 mil, obviously, this, the lens I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, I couldn't get everything in because, you know, I stepped back, to step back as far as I could against the wall. And, you know, my 12 mil would have got all this great sort of mural and this artwork in where the 20 mil, you know, didn't quite get it all in. So, you know, for me, and this is only a personal thing, the 20 mil, you know, still is a little bit tight for some of the stuff I do. However, you know, compared to 25, that extra five mil, the 25 mil, the 50 mil is sort of way too tight for me, especially for street photography. I like a wider field of view. Um, I'm really finding that the 20 mil, as I said earlier in my video, this really is a good happy medium focal length for me. However, sometimes just a little bit too tight. Another con is, is I'm finding that the focus is a tad bit slow. Um, that is definitely not a deal breaker for me. Um, yes, it is slow, but it's not like, you know, old school slow or anything like that. It's perfectly, perfectly usable. And you know, that this is me just really nitpicking. So they're the only cons I have to say so far about this lens. Everything else, it really, really does tick the box. So let me know what you think. Um, do you own the 20mm f1.7? Is it a lens you're thinking about getting? What camera do you use it with? I'm actually looking forward to using this camera with my Panasonic G85. I think it'll produce amazing results paired up with that camera. But yeah, let me know down below. And if you like this sort of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. That helps me out a lot. Big thumbs up for the video and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Okay, there we have it. Hopefully that went okay.